Welcome to Pesto Comics Audio Edition. This is the entry for October 16th, 2024. What I'm thankful for. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving. And welcome back. The feedback was pretty clear. The readers of this newsletter prefer fewer but longer emails and podcast recordings from me. I'm happy to oblige. One deadline is better than multiple, so the 75% of you have done me a favor. With that in mind, I've made some changes to make the table of contents break things up even more so. It'll make this post easier to navigate or return to if you don't get through it in one sitting. This has a little more to do with the written post you'll find on Substack, but with that in mind, I've made some changes to make the table of contents break things up and make it a bit more readable. It'll make the longer posts easier to navigate or to return to if you don't get through it in one sitting. Let me know if there's anything I should include or exclude in these posts going forward. Leave a comment on the substack if you can. It's a holiday up here in the Great White North. I'm stuffed with turkey and ready to give thanks to a whole list of folks, but I'd like to thank you, dear reader. I've been lucky to have a pretty good open rate at about 35%, with over 1,550 subscribers and growing every day. It means a lot to me that, even with the number of topics I've covered and jumped around with, you'll find value in this newsletter. Truly and honestly, thanks for being here. I'm going to do my best to keep you entertained and informed, all while continuing to be my oversharing and transparent self. And now, some project updates. 21 days until Big Smoke Pulp Volume 1. In just 21 days, the next Kickstarter from Pesto Comics will be live. It's something entirely different than we've done before. A collection of prose short stories from a number of incredible authors. I spent my spring and summer reading through hundreds of entries and narrowed it down to just over 40. That'll be about 500 pages in a pocket back paper book format, which evokes the early pulp era perfectly, just like these stories do. I can't wait for you to read them. Big Smoke Pulp Volume 1 will be on Kickstarter starting November 6th. I'll have more to share next week. You can follow Naked Kaiju Woman, I swear. I made the amateur mistake last week of putting the wrong hyperlink to the pre-launch of Naked Kaiju Woman. I apologize to the dozen or so of you who tried to follow it and were brought to a login and an error screen. I fixed that this week. In case you missed my update, this book is fully inked by Raphael. JP has confirmed it should be fully colored well before the launch date. This is 32 pages of NSFW Kaiju Mayhem, but with a lot of heart. I've always enjoyed writing strong female leads, and our lead here, Claire, is no different. I can't wait for you to meet her. Oh, and bonus points for anyone who gets the reference... In the cover by Raphael, you can see that on the substack. Naked Kaiju Woman launches in 84 days on January 8th, 2025. Event update. Comics in the Brewery, Wayside Creator Con. Just under two weeks until I'm at my last Canadian show of 2024. This one's going to be a lot of fun. This is the first all I've been to in a brewery. I've seen the flyer on the socials of so many creators that I really do admire. It's quite the lineup, and I'm honored to be amongst them. Crowdfunding Indie Comics Workshop at Thought Bubble. I've been excited for Thought Bubble for months. I've also been a little nervous. The rules about foreigners selling things to the public are pretty strict, so I thought I might be at Thought Bubble just to shake hands and hand out some freebies. Turns out, I have a lot more to offer. I'll be doing a workshop called Crowdfunding Indie Comics on Sunday at 11am. If you saw my presentation at TCAF, you know I can be pretty thorough with these. I'm looking forward to working with everyone across the pond to get your comics funded on Kickstarter and beyond. And now, let's jump into the main story. Same but different. Fox 29 was the go-to network in my house growing up in Brampton, Ontario. A lot of the shows we loved would air on there from neighboring Buffalo, New York. It was always a little bit weird when Thanksgiving episodes of our favorite shows would air weeks after our turkey leftovers have been devoured. Seeing Christmas decorations at Thanksgiving celebrations rather than Halloween skeletons and witches abound, was always a strange sight. I eventually realized that Canadian Thanksgiving happened at an entirely different time. It's one of those few holidays that our countries don't share. Victoria Day, a week before Memorial Day being another one. Otherwise, even if the names don't always match up, see Remembrance Day and Veterans Day, the concept is usually the same. Thanksgiving celebrations might be very similar. Inappropriate family arguments, too much turkey and stuffing for all, pumpkin pie and food comas. However, it's a totally different feeling going to celebrations while the leaves are just starting to turn from what we see on TV. Happy to be here. I'm a loud and proud Canadian. I mention it too often, whether or not I'm asked. It means a lot to me to be in a country that has afforded me so many opportunities. 
The country where, growing up Italian, it was encouraged not only to appreciate your family heritage, but to share it with everyone. And with everyone else doing the same, getting to experience a little bit of the world without having to stray very far from your front door. This year alone, we had French pastries, Portuguese potatoes and rice, Canadian coffee, which is just what Italians in Canada call drip coffee, and more. It's not just European-centric foods and customs we're exposed to either. The city where my parents live and where I grew up is heavily South Asian. My freezer is regularly stocked with Jamaican beef patties. Throw a rock and you'll hit a sushi restaurant or a Thai restaurant or an Italian bakery. It's hard to get bored when you have the world to choose from. Strolling through Toronto, you can find nearly every kind of food. And, unlike a place like New York, it's not that far removed from the real thing. Most of the people that have come here from abroad haven't been here too long. The traditions are still strongly held, and it shows up on your plate. And not just food. Though you can insulate yourself with your own culture, it's a lot of fun meeting folks from outside of it. It's easier to empathize with people when you learn that, even though you may have some differences, most people just want the same things. Somewhere safe to live, good friends, happy families, and fun things to entertain themselves with. It's made working in comics a lot of fun too. Everyone is coming from somewhere completely different, bringing entirely different angles to how people approach this business. I've learned so much in talking to people at conventions here, it's been one of my favorite takeaways. Specifically, living here in Toronto has afforded me with a pretty good day job. It's the economic engine of the country. This city is the economic engine of the country. I've been able to get a job that has been pretty fulfilling, working at the largest hospital network in the country. I've learned a ton, advancing up the corporate ladder while doing so. I found my place where I've been able to carve out my corner of specialization. It's a skill that few others have. Living in a country where running a hospital is less about profit than sustainability, I've been able to grow while knowing I'd have some stability in doing so. Having that secure footing allows me to branch out into comics, doing things a little faster than may seem reasonable or advisable, knowing that I have a safety net of a corporate job to keep me afloat. I don't know that I'd have a similar opportunity elsewhere in the world, or even this country or province. It's not all perfect. Housing has been a problem for the country in general. Yes, all the Western world has been feeling the pinch, but not like Toronto and long-suffering Vancouver. Getting a home here is a pipe dream. And yet, thanks to my frugal wife and even more frugal in-laws, we've managed to get our own piece of semi-detached paradise. We'd love something bigger, something closer to the lake, something with a garage, but I'm thankful to get anything at all. I'm thankful for where it is, just a 15-minute train ride into the core of the city. I'm thankful it's a nice house for us to make a home in. Life is short. It's a morbid thought, but it's true. I'm thankful I have lasted as long as I have. That I've been generally healthy. I'm thankful I've been resilient enough to take the leap into comics without fear of what could go wrong. To finally do the thing that I'd been dreaming I'd do one day without really doing it until a couple years ago. I'm thankful to have the support of my friends, a handful of which support every campaign I've put out there, that have shared these projects like it's their own, that have offered their kind words of support that keeps me fueled to keep going. I'm thankful for my family, my wife who supports me, though she wouldn't read a comic if I paid her to, my brother who's been my sounding board for years and continues to support every campaign and more, my parents who inspired me to take the leap with their own courage in all their endeavors, and I can never say it enough, but I'm thankful to you for being here, for reading or listening, to what I have to say week in, week out. I'm just a dude in his basement in South Etobicoke trying to make it in funny books. The fact that you take time out of your day to spend it with me means the world, and I'm forever grateful. Thank you for being you, and until next Wednesday. Coming up on the Substack, October 23rd, it's okay to start over when it comes to your favorite IP. And October 30th, Con Journal, a new market, a new market, tabling at the inaugural Wayside Creators Con. And November 6th, Don't Skimp on the Pulp, Big Smoke Pulp Volume 1 launches, why I admire the pulp era and how it influences my work. And once again, that's it for this week. I really do appreciate you listening. I think I've said it a few times <laughs> this episode, but it really does mean a lot when you listen. I really do love it. And I love giving you these extra little bits at the end of the recording, just for those who bother to listen to the podcast. I do know that, you know, a lot of folks will just skim through these extra long posts I'm putting together. I do try to keep it kind of interesting, of course, but I really do appreciate when folks really do listen. 
beginning to end. It means a lot. So I always love getting to talk to you directly without just straight up reading the newsletter. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot going on. I'm going to be at Wayside Creator Con in a couple of weeks, and then I'm going to Thought Bubble a couple of weeks after that. Um, we have a whole bunch of projects coming out. Big Smoke Pulp, A Naked Kaiju Woman. Um, from Parts Unknown 2 is in progress of being colored now, so we're aiming for that in February. And there's a whole bunch of projects I'm keeping under wraps right now because I'm working with some other folks to get those together. But I can't wait to show you all the things that we're putting together here. I'm very lucky to be working with some really great people in doing it all. It's just going to be a lot of fun. It's all these projects that have been boiling under the surface for a long time. And, you know, I was really looking to get my footing with Pesto Comics. I think we're finally ready in there. We have a good launch pad and we're ready to release more and more and more. And... Yeah, I appreciate everything you do to help, whether it's actually backing campaigns or just spreading the word and, and letting people know what we're doing. I really do appreciate it. It means a ton. Until next time, we'll talk next week. Thank you so much.